Hey, it's Mike Caruso with the Fisherman Magazine, and today we're going to change the bearings in our boat trailer. Relatively easy project that you can do at home with a few basic tools and some product like this CRC Marine Grease. Uh, it's essential every three to five years, depending on the use, especially in salt water, to address the bearings and make sure that they're well lubricated and, uh, and, and change them from time to time so that you have problem-free boat trailering. Okay, so before we jack the boat up to basically take the, uh, the tires off, we want to make sure that everything is safe. And so you want the tires chocked, but you also want your trailer hooked up to the hitch and secured down. Um, you want as many points of stability as you can when you're jab jacking up the boat and pulling tires off, doing anything under the boat. So this is step one. All right, so the next part of this is to actually jack the trailer up so we can get the tire off. We're going to use a jack, and we're going to lift from the frame, which is the strongest part of the trailer, obviously. And we're going to keep pumping. Both tires are chocked until this tire comes off the ground and spins. So wait on it now. Okay. But we're going to want to secure it in another place with another jack for sure. Don't want to trust the jack when I'm working under the boat. Right, now on this wheel we obviously have a seal problem. The seal is just blown out. It got the entire rim coated with, uh, with grease. There is no cover here. So this tire is definitely suspect or this hub and these bearings are suspect for a problem. When you see this sort of thing and it's brown, gross grease, um, yeah, that's a problem. And so what we're going to do first to rectify it is we're going to take it apart. And so, got to get to get the cap off first and again you can really see it's got um, it's got some really brown brown grease there but we're gonna we're gonna fix that and make it right okay so we're gonna try to first clean it off so we can get at the cotter pin the cotter pin has to be removed so that we can take off the nut And there's our cotter pin. Next up, we want to take the the, uh, the hub nut off, which is loose. It's got a little bit of play in it, so I think we're going to have some issues with this. Just judging from the color of the grease is giving a strong indication that we have a lot of water infiltration, and we know that because the seal was broken. But we'll really get to tell a little bit more as we get in. Saving all the parts to the side. Next off would be, there's a washer in there. So you want to save the washer. Yeah, the washer and the bearing itself. And the bearing I could tell right away. Uh, it's got wear on it. There's dark spots. Yeah, the bearing is shot. The bearing is totally shot. I could see so many worn areas on the bearing so it's time time to replace it upon closer inspection we see that this the real seal is completely it's completely screwed up here it's um it's just not sitting it's dried out it's no good and um everything about it's shot so this whole assembly has to come out this is the seal and you can see it's not in great shape this hub um, is kind of rusted in there. So we're going to have to take a hammer. We're going to try to pry this thing off. It does not look good. Okay, that is what you call a 
that is a blown seal completely rotted out it's just a mess and all those shards are got have gotten into the bearing you know the bearing is you can tell there's there's problems with it you know just from looking at the color of the grease and um, you know this is a problem so we've got to this just in time first thing we do, we're going to do is get rid of these parts we're going to do a thorough cleaning uh, I take all the grease out remove the racers from both the this outer side or this inner side and the outer side using a hammer and a screwdriver you're going to want to feel the edge of the racer of the outer side and give it a tap but give it even taps on every side kind of a four point approach so that it's coming off equally and not wedging in And that's it. <clears throat> okay, now, now what we're going to do is try to get out the inner race. The way to do that is to go at it from the front of the tire. Screwdriver is going to be on the inner lip of that race. Remember, it's kind of wedged in there. You hit one side, it goes down, the other side stays put. So you have to go from point to point to point, point to point to point to point until you slowly work that out and um, this way it doesn't get stuck because then you're going to need a new hub if you can't get it out. And that's it. The race, the race is now removed. Okay, and yeah, the race doesn't look bad. We probably could have left those in there, but hey, we're going to do the whole job and put them all in. Okay, so the entire hub is disassembled at this point. My next trip is to the marine supply store to get the exact bearings and all the parts I need, the seals. Um, everything and so really the only way to do that is to br for me is to bring all the parts to the marine supply s store and make sure that they match up perfectly and so I'm going to actually put them in a plastic bag remember these are messy all the all the parts that go to the front so I want to keep these separate and all the parts that go to the inside of the hub this way I could take them in I could analyze and compare uh, the parts that are on the shelf uh, to what I need specifically. Okay, so I've got my new parts from the trailer supply store and um, this is the race that goes into the inner part of the hub. And to get that in, much like the way we got it out, we have to do it in a very balanced way. Want that race to sit in there evenly without one side going deeper at any time uh, because it'll be crooked and it'll get wedged in, it'll get stuck, you'll have a problem. Um, so we're going to put this in systematically point to point to point, hitting it with a hammer and a um, screwdriver. And uh, we're going to have it sit. There's a ridge inside the hub where this sits upon. And this is so important because the bearings, this is the surface that the bearings ride upon. So the first thing we're going to do is put a little bit of grease inside where the race goes and I'm using CRC marine grease again just kind of coating the area around the hub where the race will slip onto this just make it a little easier and you're not going to get grease in there later so put it in now I don't like to put it too heavy here just enough just coat it also coat the outer part of the race itself with the flat part down, we're going to set it in as evenly as we can to start out with. And then take our hammer 
And this time I have a tool, a little, a little punch, and the punch does help. Of course, a screwdriver will work, but this gets a little bit of a wider area to hit, which is always better. Now you'll have to do this for a while. It's tight. It will go down though. I can feel it moving very slightly. You can hear it as it, kind of the tone. The tone of the tap, the tone of the taps kind of change. And again, the idea is to get the rays to sit on the hub and so, you kind of will know when that is. Number one, it won't be moving, but it'll be kind of flush. You can actually see under the race to see if it's sitting on the lip. But more importantly, you'll hear it. You'll hear a sound. You'll hear like a more, I don't know, contact sound. just a real solid sound rather than kind of like a ring. So I think we're good. I think we are sat into the race, but you know, you always check. I don't feel any gap underneath it and that's what I'm feeling for here. So I think we're good on the inner race. And um, just double checking everything as we go. Okay, I'm going to give it a little bit of a clean in case there's any kind of shard that went in there. I'm going to clean it up and then we're going to kind of grease it again, but it looks good. You can also inspect it. It does look even. It's sitting in there perfectly. Got a good job. It's got the new bearings and we're going to have to pack grease onto them. Take some grease. Again, the CRC marine grease and we're going to pack the bearings. By pushing them as we go around, pushing the grease into the bearing, yep, pushing the grease in the bearing forcefully, kind of like squishing it in, all right? It's no real technical term for this, but we are packing bearings, trying to get them completely engorged in this marine grease. You really got to work it in. I mean, it's on the sides as well. And then coating the race itself. Okay. So Okay, now that we have the race and the bearings packed, uh, the next part is to simply uh, put the seal. The seal goes around the outer edge of the hub and kind of slips in as well. Kind of get it started by pushing it down again. This is another piece that needs to get kind of wedged in there evenly. And so let's take a look at how that's done. Okay, once again using a hammer, and a straight edge. You can use a block of wood. This screwdriver happens to have square sides to it, so it's ideal. But I want to get this seal uh, into the, uh, the hub evenly. And so, a couple taps going, kind of going around the circular motion with the hammer easily, though. Not banging this out. And now it is also set, set very nicely, 
into, uh, into the assembly of the hub. We've got the inner part of the hub all set with the race, the packed bearings, and the seal. Now it's time to get the front part. Basically do the same thing. We're going to put, install the race, uh, pack the bearings, and then we're ready to put it up on the axle. Little by little, just going around the perimeter of that race evenly. Kind of like a four point, couple taps on each side, so it's not twisting. You can see it moving ever so slightly. And the objective is to, is to get that race to be sitting on the hub kind of ridge there. And um, there's a, a sound, more solid sound that you will that you'll get once the once the race is is sat. You could see too, it's very hard to show a camera angle, but you could see there's a little bit more space between the ridge and the edge of the race. So we got a little bit more to go. That sounded better. Okay, checking to see if there's any gap, and it does not look like there is. That looks like it sat pretty well. It's the hardest part of the job. I would say we are good to go. And um, that's it. The race is set in the front portion. The next part is going to be the front bearings and just to show you that, that that's how they sit. They sit perfectly in that gap right there and so these now have to be packed with grease just like we did the other side. Grease inside the race, the entire axle, liberally, with what's left over. And that fits right into the race perfectly. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is clean off that axle, which is coated with pretty bad grease. The axle itself doesn't look like it's in bad shape at all. It's not scorn, it's not worn, it looks good. But got to get that old grease off on the threads everywhere. Uh, as we begin to think about and getting ready for reassembly with the new part. So we got that pretty well cleaned. And one of the things, while I have an exposed axle, is I want to assure uh, that grease is actually going to be able to flow through. It's not being blocked in any way. Um, through the grease fitting that, uh, that, that pushes grease through the axle and out this end here to lubricate uh, the bearings. And so to do that, basically take your grease gun, put it into the fitting, stop. You can see it's flowing through clean grease, made its way through the canal, and it's coming out the port. So we know we're okay there. Okay, so we've got the bearings packed. We've got the racers inserted. Next part before we put the hub back on the axle, basically inspect the axle. Make sure that it's clean. This is the time to address any rust. If you're going to do any scraping or, or brushing, which I'm going to do here, let's cover that axle as to not to get any, any of the shards on there. But anywhere there's rust, I like to give it a hit with a, a wire brush. So instant galvanize, um, again, a great way to protect parts that are showing signs of some rust. You could definitely slow that down. So we're going to cover everything up here, give it a couple hits. Okay, with the wheel now on the hub, it's time to put 
time to insert the uh, the outside bearing that we have already packed. Basically, we're going to slip that in as best as we can. Okay, with the wheel on and the bearing in, now we have to put the washer. And then behind that is the nut. The axle nut should be snug and you want the axle lug, lug to actually push the bearing further in because it's very hard to push it in with your fingers but the nut will get it in there evenly and you can tell it's in there well when that tire doesn't shake or shimmy at all and then I back off half a turn to give it some looseness that's good yeah that's perfect right there so then with uh, the gap open for the cotter pin and drive that cotter pin back in. I want it to completely clear the inner hub because next part is to put the protective cap over and you know you need room for that. In a circular motion, in a circular motion, you get get the cap seated until it sets up on the hub. 